group of friends spends vacation on a tropical island. They party, travel, enjoy some extreme sports, but it turns out that the dream is over as soon as we switch perspective to the cell where a man shows the vacation footage we saw earlier to one of them. It's Grant and Jackson who are in captivity and the guy tells them they look expensive, suggesting they will receive a ransom for them. Then he gets mad at Grant and threatens him, but calms down and soon another guy tells him to stop scaring the hostages and take off the rejects. The Iroka's anger management issues guy is named Voss. Soon Grant manages to free his hands from the rope. He also unties his brother Jason and the duo distracts the guard and Grant knocks him down and opens the cell with his keys. They slowly sneak through the cup and manage to find an office where they grab their stuff and map. On the way, it turns out Grant is in the military, so he knows how to fight. At one point, they see Vaz executing four people because no one wanted to pay for them. Soon, they manage to find an exit and carefully sneak under the guard's side into the jungle. Grant tells Jason they will find the others and get back home, but he gets shut down. Turns out, it's Voss. Jason tries to help his wounded brother, but he dies. Voss tells Jason he respects their courage, so he will give him 30 seconds before he starts chasing him. Jason runs through the jungle, being chased by Voss and his dogs. They even brought a chopper. At one point, he almost gets caught, but manages to stop the enemy with his own knife. While trying to cross the river, he is approached by a chopper and it shoots at him, breaking the bridge and Jason falls into the water. Then we see someone grabbing his hand and pulling him out. Jason stays unconscious for a while and when he wakes up, there is a man next to him. Jason doesn't feel safe and looks for something to defend himself, but the guy who threatens him with a machete is only joking. Actually, his name is Dennis and he introduces Jason to a Manaki village. Turns out they are some kind of opposite faction to Voss's pirates and they are at war with them. Well, to be honest, they definitely have better parties and more hot chicks hanging around. Anyway, Jason buys a weapon and learns how life in the jungle works, hunting for skins, gathering herbs for medicine and all that jazz, along with some basic combat skills. Soon a phone he stole from one of the pirates rings and turns out pirates of one of his friends, Lisa. Dennis takes him to the outpost and they take it over, but turns out Lisa is not there and Jason overhears a radio conversation informing that she escapes to the west part of the island. Well, at least Jason earned himself some street credit. Dennis tells Jason Dr. Earnhardt has found one of his friends, so Jason goes to his house. Well, Doc looks like a total junkie, but he did found Daisy. She is ill because apparently, while running away, she cut her arm on one of the poisonous trees. Now she needs medicine to make antidotes, so Jason goes to find some cave mushrooms. When he finds them, he quickly realizes they give a nice kick. And for a few moments, this game turns into Max Payne. But Jason manages to get through those visions and bring the mushrooms to Earnhardt. Daisy is awake now and she tells that Doc saved her when she managed to escape from the convoy. Jason thanks Earnhardt and tells him about the other missing friends and asks him can, I, can they have a little safe house here at his house. Earnhardt says no way, Vass's boys come here regularly to buy drugs. But Jason says it's a good thing because that's why they won't suspect them here. Turns out that Doc tends to confuse Daisy with some woman named Agnes and he changes his mind when she asks him personally. Jason is informed by Dennis that pirates use a satellite dish for communication located on the Medusa, a ship that has been pitched nearby. Jason goes there and tries to listen to the signal. He learns that when pirates get the ransom, they will sell everyone on black market anyway to double the money. When Jason gets back to Amanaki village, Dennis tells him that Vaz is preparing an attack on the village. He is asked to sabotage the weapons Vaz is gathering. He goes to the logging camp and shuts off the alarm, and then sneaks and plants stolen explosives and blows up pirates' weapons. Dennis is more than happy and tells Jason where pirates may be keeping his friends, 
Turns out they have one of their prisons in Sunset Cove and Jason overheard that name while listening through the radio on Medusa. Before Jason performs an assault on the prison, he gathers some weapons and supplies by taking down a few small enemy outposts. At one point, Daisy calls him from Earnhardt's phone and tells Doc, put her in the cave near the house because vast boys come along all the time. She also says she found something interesting down there. Jason sneaks to the prison and kills the camp operator to get prison key. When he manages to get inside, turns out his friend is not there, but pirates left some video footage of her made at this place for ransom reasons. Unfortunately, Jason gets ambushed by one of the pirates who knocks him down. He wakes up in captivity and Vass is spilling gasoline all over the place. He asks about Jason's tattoo that he got for helping locals in combat. Boss asks, did he get it from his sister? Then he tells him he will kill his sister, like he did his brother. Then he confesses that there was a time he would do anything for his sister and first time he ever killed was for her. Then he has another mental breakdown that ends with throwing a match on the ground. Pirates leave and Jason tries to break the ropes, he actually does, but he falls down into what looks like a basement of some kind of a tomb or facility. Jason runs through the flames to get back to Lisa and free her. Then they take a risky jump and steal a truck. Lisa takes the wheel and Jason takes the gun. Pirates try to chase them, but Jason manages to defend the truck with a grenade launcher he found in the back of the car. Lisa tells Jason that Oliver was took to a place called the Bunker. Jason takes Lisa to their safe place. They find a cave and reunite with Daisy. Turns out she found a boat, but it's broken. Daisy apparently knows a lot about boat fixing scene, since she provides Jason with a list of parts she needs to fix it. Jason finds the missing part and turns out that junk actually works. Meanwhile, Lisa acts like she wanna hold hands and shit, but no time for summer camp romance. Jason calls Dennis and he tells him to meet Citra, as she is the one that has the power to defeat Voss. Jason goes to her temple in the jungle and meets Dennis, who takes him inside. Citra has a similar vibe as Voss. Jason convinces her he might be worth her time and she gives him something to drink. This stuff kicks in quickly. In a weird vision, he goes underwater into some ruins and finds a dagger. Citra wants him to find it in real life and bring it to her. Jason goes to a nearby town and it turns out he saw it in that vision. In a local bar he spots a man in white suit who was also in the vision. He decides to follow him. The white suit guy asks Jason a few questions but turns out he knows who he is and he knows about his friends. He wants to trade favors. His name is Agent Willis Huntley. He brags he discovered something big but he needs more info. Then, then he shows Jason a flamethrower and tells him about Hoyt Volker, who is the boss of Vaz. He runs the largest slave trading ring in South Pacific plus some drug business as well. Willis tells Jason to set fire to his fields to attract his attention and bring him down to the island. Jason reaches the place just in time for the execution. Willis tells Jason to extract one of his men as he has the transportation manifest leading to his friend Oliver. Jason takes down the Hoyt soldiers and saves Rongo, but soon more enemies arrive. They fight their way to the village and Rongo shows Jason the manifest. Willis gets a picture of it and tells him that Oliver is on a convoy right as they speak. Jason reaches the destination before his enemies and manages to save his friend from them before he is extracted. They escape with a boat down the river, being chased by boats and cars, but they manage to lose them and reach the safe place. While in the cave, Lisa tells him she cares about him and tries to tell him not to risk his life anymore, but Jason is like, yeah, whatever, I got places to be and people to kill, babe. Meanwhile, Willis reports that Kate was already sold to a hitman working for Hoyt. Willis reveals a bar he usually attends to. This guy name is Buck and he tells Jason he wants that dagger in return. Buck says that Vaz stole a bolt from a treasure hunter recently and if Jason searches it, he will find the location of the knife. On board, Jason finds a computer and downloads the files, but the process is interrupted by an explosion. Boat starts to sink and Jason must find a way to get out of it before he drowns. 
Luckily, he finds a few air cylinders on the way that help him stay alive and manages to escape before the ship explodes. He wakes up on the beach and Buck is already there. He asks if Jason has a compass that was on the boat. Jason has it and now he has to use it to find the dagger. Turns out it's hidden in some Chinese ruins, but this place is filled with pirates. Jason finds a gate and gets inside. There he is for some serious uncharted shit. Climbing, pushing stuff to open a passage, avoiding traps, you know, uncharted shit. But the sad part is, he didn't find the knife. Buck is mad, but Jason found a ring. And turns out it works with the compass and it starts glowing. It points to the old mine, Jason explores it and goes really deep underground. There he finds another part of the compass. It points to Captain Lincoln's tomb. Jason dives there and finds the entrance. Somehow there are dozens of pirates inside, but Jason explains to himself maybe Buck tipped them because wherever he goes looking for the treasure, Buck gets there first and gives him a little story about the treasure. Nothing special really, it's ancient Chinese gold that Captain tried to stall and hide from his admiral Zhang He on this island. Jason finds the tomb and takes the dagger from Kong's corpse. It triggers a system of traps and the whole place starts collapsing so Jason barely makes it out alive. Back calls and tells Jason to meet him at his place. When Back gets the dagger he gives Jason a key to the basement where he keeps Keith. But soon it turns out that Back actually plans to keep them both as prisoners. Jason fights him and manages to kill him with the dagger. Keith is really broken since Back raped him and stuff. He tells Jason that Riley, the, his younger brother, is dead and asks him not to tell the rest about what Bag did to him. Jason gets really angry that Riley is dead. Lisa makes another move, but Jason gets pissed and runs away from the cave. He takes the knife and brings it to Citra. She takes it and tells the legend of a warrior who cut the head of a giant and when it fell on the ground it became this island. And the people on it are descendants of that warrior. True story. Then she tells Jason to free some of her men held by Voss on a convoy. Dennis and the others help with the ambush. Everything goes well, but when Jason tries to free the prisoners from the truck, Voss appears and knocks him down. When Jason wakes up, Voss has him tied to a stone and throws him down into the water. Jason manages to free himself and follows Voss to find out where he is taking captured warriors. Soon he finds a chopper and hijacks it but it gets hit by a missile while they try to take off. Jason survives the crash and Vaz shows up again. This time he just shoots him. But it turns out Jason is immortal and soon he wakes up in a mass grave and has to squeeze through other bodies to reach the surface. When Vaz boys spot him they actually think he came back from the dead and just escaped. Honestly, I don't blame them. Dennis shows up and he is also a bit surprised but turns out there's a perfect explanation. Remember when Vaz tried to burn Jason alive? His lighter didn't work, so he put it in Jason's pocket and used matches instead. Well, turns out, now it stopped the bullet and saved Jason's life. Anyways, that shit gives Jason a lot of street credit back in Citrus Temple. She gives him another mixture and this time Jason fights the giant from the legend and cuts his head. Damn, that's poetic. And when he wakes up, Citra is riding him like a bike. Technically it's a rape, but I think those guys call it initiation, since everyone came to see it. Wait, so does this mean that everyone who becomes a Rakyat gets to bang Citra in front of the rest? I'm a bit confused. Jason then gives a poetic motivational speech and the quest to kill Vaz begins. Jason goes to his camp and looks for him only to find out he took a home office that day. Vaz knew he was coming and set a trap. Jason barely makes it out alive and Vaz sends everything he has left to hunt him down. But Jason the warrior now remember? So he deals with the minions and looks for Vaz in his garage just to get ambushed like a total amateur. Vaz stops him with a poisoned dagger. That's weird because it looks like the Chinese one he has given to Citra earlier in exchange for sex and manpower. Jason has a vision of him fighting with Vaz and killing him many times until he stabs him with the dagger. When he wakes up, Citra tells him that Vaz is dead. She also explains how Hoyt took Vaz from her and Jason promises to bring her Hoyt's head on the plate. Jason also tells her 
He is not going back with his friends, he wants to stay here with her on the island. Yeah, can't wait to see Lisa's face when she hears it. He also tells her about Willis, who is able to help him to get Hoyt. Then he leaves. He goes to his friends and tells them he stays on the island. Lisa has a meltdown and Daisy gets mad and tells Jason to leave them alone. Later Willis calls him and tells he was assigned to another mission and he is leaving soon. He also can't help much on locating Hoyt but tells Jason he had an agent at Hoyt's island once and he might still be alive. He helps Jason to get there by dropping him from a plane while on his way to Russia for his next mission. Willis also gives Jason the secret password so this guy knows who sent him. At the bar Jason joins the poker game with the privateers. Sam is among them. After he loses a few rounds he leaves, Jason follows him and Sam is happy to hear from Willis. When Sam hears Jason came to kill Hoyt he realizes he is Jason Brody, the one who killed Vaz. He gets excited to work with Jason and figures since Hoyt doesn't know how he looks he can enlist as a new privateer. He tells Jason to find a new recruit, kill him and steal his gear. This time Jason has to act quietly to make sure no one sees his face before he dresses up in the uniform. When he gets the uniform he reports to the officer and passes the scanning under the name Foster. Officer also takes him on the side and asks if he wants to earn some extra money. Jason agrees and the guy reveals that since Voss is dead there's no one to control the drug business so everyone is making money behind Hoyt's back since he has bigger problems right now. Then Hoyt shows up and welcomes new recruits. He also shows what happens to ones who break his rules. Later Jason tells Sam about the proposal and they agree killing those traitors would quickly earn Hoyt's trust. So Jason goes to the old temple and kills the traitor's captains. Then he meets Sam near the plantation where they disarm the bomb planted by pirates. After that he goes to the old mining complex and interrupts a meeting on the bridge by firing an RPG missile. That makes pirates drop the roll sheet with the list of all the traitors and it falls into the water so Jason picks it up. Sam arranges a meeting with Hoyt and introduces Jason aka Foster to him. Jason gives Hoyt the list and he is really impressed. Then he tries to be even bigger weirdo than Vaz. He blows up a boat with people on board held for ransom because the customer didn't want to negotiate outside country lines. He also brags a lot about his slave business. Then he tells Jason to go downstairs and torture Guy, informing that he will be watching on cameras. And turns out it's Riley, his younger brother. So Jason must interrogate Riley about Jason pretending to be Foster. And that has to look legit as Hoyt is watching. Damn that plot is good. Sam manages to mess up the camera for a second, giving Jason time to explain. Actually he wants to release his brother, but Sam tells that's a suicide and for now they had to stick to their story and kill Hoyt the other way. Riley says it's okay and he will take the beating, so Jason beats him and tortures him. Hoyt is happy since Riley revealed that he is Jason's brother and Jason gets an invitation to a poker night with his boss. Sam comes up with a plan to disable Hoyt's communication network and blow up his fuel depot, then use the chaos to execute him at the poker game. Jason blows up the satellite dish by planting C4 on the struts. Now it's time for a poker night with Hoyt and it all goes well, but all of a sudden Hoyt puts a knife in Sam's throat. His men take Jason on a gunpoint and he reveals that he knows Foster is Jason Brody. He actually knows everything at this point. Hoyt deals the cards and Jason plays for his life. He gets lucky and wins, but he lost another round and Hoyt tells him he'll take one finger every time he loses. And after Hoyt cuts off Jason's finger, he gets a vision similar to the one he had with Vaz, where he fights with Hoyt and kills him with a knife. When he gets over it, the room is filled with dead bodies. Jason goes to save Riley. While on that, Lisa calls and tells that they are taking them away, where Jason reaches the airfield and searches for Riley. He finds him and frees him. Then he fights his way out, protecting his brother. They reach the chopper and Riley tries to take off since he has a plane pilot license while Jason defends the machine with a machine gun. Riley manages to take off and they fly over the island, machine gunning the hell out of this place. 
They manage to reach Dr. Earnhardt's house and it's burning. Jason finds Doc dying and he reveals that jungle warriors took everyone else to the temple. Jason and Riley go to meet with Citra and she blows some poison straight into Jason's face. Then she ties him and starts a ritual. Well, this girl is clearly a bigger psycho than Lisa ever will be. And she is all about, I will free you from your past, Jason. Soon she disappears and Jason has another vision, walking on a burning bridge with a dagger and his friends appear as demons. At the end of the bridge, Citra gives Jason the blade and when he wakes up, he has a choice, kill his friends and join Citra or save them. If he chooses to save them, Citra tries to convince him to change his mind, but Jason throws down the knife and tells he has enough of this violence. Citra gets sad and Dennis shows up and he is angry about Jason rejecting that kind of a perfect 10, so he tries to stop him, but Citra stands on the way and she gets killed. Before she dies, she tells Jason she loves him. Dennis cries over Citra's dead body and Jason reflects about the monster and killer he become. But he believes that somewhere inside, he is more than that. Then we see a boat leaving the island. But if Jason chooses to join Citra and kill Lisa and all the others, we see him having an intercourse with Citra, apparently to give her a baby. And when it's done, she kills him. As Jason is dying, Citra tells him their child will lead the Rakyat. And that's how the game ends.